Hey everybody, Matt here. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to continue looking at SketchUp Free. All right, welcome back. This is actually part five of my video series about SketchUp Free. At the end of part four, I left you looking at this model and how I actually go about making printouts so I can try and build or fabricate whatever it is I've designed. At the end of part four, I also thought I was going to be done with making videos about SketchUp Free, but it turns out that there's just so many other things that you can do and it's very powerful and so I decided to continue on and make some more videos about SketchUp Free. If you are new to SketchUp in general or 3D modeling or SketchUp Free in particular, you might want to go back and take a look at those four videos first because part five, this video, is going to pick up where I left off on part four. So at the end of part four, I left you looking at this model, and this is just sort of a a sample model that I put together that uses all the tools we were exploring in the first uh, few videos about SketchUp Free. And that means, namely, that was the rectangle tool, push pull, the move tool, the rotate tool, pencil or the line tool, the select tool, and so on. So, if, uh, once again, if you're not familiar, with those uh, tools that I just mentioned, you might want to go back and check out the earlier videos. All right, in this video, what I want to do is show you a model of a project that I am currently designing with the intention of actually building. So this isn't an exercise, this is something I actually want to fabricate. And this is a flip top table. So this top table surface actually rotates around, and I'll show you that at some point, either in this video or the next. It has hinged casters on it, so you can flip the casters um, away, so out, so that the whole table rests on these leveling feet, or you can flip the, the casters in under the supports for the table, so you can roll the table around very easily. I do have videos about the leveling feet, that I use and on the hinged casters. So if you haven't seen either one of those videos, I'll leave links in the video description so you can check out those videos if you like. Okay, so what I want to talk about in this video is how I actually designed this. What was the thought process? So that perhaps if you have an idea in your head for something that you'd like to design and perhaps even fabricate, you can understand my process and maybe it will work for you or maybe you can modify the process a little bit so that it suits your, your style a little bit better. So how I actually started was by drawing a 2x4. So nominal dimensions on a 2x4 are an inch and a half thick by three and a half inches wide by however long you want them to be. So I knew I was going to build this outside frame on both sides from 2x4s. I didn't really know how long the 2x4s were going to be, so I just took a guess to start with. And what I actually decided on when I just first started was 2 feet 6 inches, which is 30 inches tall. So that was my original estimate for how tall the table was going to be. And then for the width of the part of the table that actually rotates, right, it's this part right here that rotates around. For the rotating width, I had decided on 1 foot 8 inches, which is 20 inches wide. And again, that was just kind of a guess. I do have an idea for the two tools that I want to mount on this cart, one tool on this side and one on the other side. When I first started drawing this up, I didn't have those the dimensions for those tools, so 
I was just anxious to get started with something so I just estimated 20 inches wide 30 inches tall for the table so I started by drawing a 2 by 4 okay and you've seen me do that on the other videos and I just started copying or duplicating the 2 by 4 and so I had one two three four of them standing up vertically and then two of them horizontally and then what I did was I just moved the horizontal one so that it would join the two vertical ones and you can see here that the the two by fours fully overlap here there's no joinery that's described here in the model yet for the length of this horizontal piece I actually modeled it to be two feet six inches long so there's my that's 30 inches so it's as deep as it is tall and again that was just kind of an estimate the actual build this piece well I haven't decided how long this actual piece will be okay so just like in the other videos each 2x4 was set up as its own group so I could move them in contact with each other and didn't have to worry about them sticking together okay so what I did was I just positioned those 2x4s in space and then I went about and built the inside or the flip top table so let me uh, show you a little bit more about how these components all went together and you can hopefully get an idea of how I what the design process was so when I click on the whole model you can see that everything is highlighted that's because when I finished with this level of the design I highlighted everything and made it a group so what I want to do now just as I did in the earlier videos is explode the group so <clears throat> I have to keep going because I have multiple groups inside of each other so now I have this top section highlighted as its own group so if I move this away from the two vertical sides like so then I can sh I can start to show you what's actually what actually goes into making this top and if you look let me try and fix this a little bit so if you look right over in this section of the screen as I move it's a little bit hard to see but the top is actually moving parallel to the green axis and in fact it says in the little tooltip there on green axis so I'm doing that deliberately just to try and keep everything lined up even though things are in you know they're separated okay so here's the first other tool I wanted to call your attention to so if I click on this group for the table right click it and hit explode and if I click on the top piece of plywood just that piece is highlighted and I made that piece just like I did with the 2 by 4s I drew a rectangle and used push pull to get it to the width that I wanted and then I highlighted the whole thing and made it saved it as a group so that's why just this top is being selected if I go over to well if I right click it right from here I can click on hide okay and so what that does it didn't delete it it just takes it out of view if I want to put it back into view make it visible I move over to this little tool over here it looks like a pair of eyeglasses it's actually labeled display if I click on that this panel comes out and again I've got the display part of the panel showing there's a bunch of checkboxes here if I click on hidden objects now it shows me 
kind of a partially visible view of that piece of plywood, the top of the table. If I now right click this and I say unhide, now it's back. Okay, so this is very valuable to know how to do because as you, at least the way I design things, as I sandwich together parts, uh, parts are different parts are going to obstruct the view of other parts on the inside so it's nice to be able to hide selected pieces of your model from view so you can see what's underneath so I've re-hidden the top and now I'm going to uncheck this box and it takes it away from view it's still there it's just hidden so now we can see that the top of the table is just made of four more two by fours. And these lines here show that this cross piece here is of full length. There's no joinery in here. It's a full length two by four that was just positioned to overlap to the two side rails. That's what these two lines indicate. And then I have another piece of plywood that represents the bottom uh, part of the table. And then I have some holes or a circle marking the center of the whole sandwich of two pieces of plywood with these four two by fours. Okay, so using the hide feature is, I find I use that quite a bit because it allows me to see parts of the model which are otherwise obstructed. So that's kind of the first thing I wanted to show you. It's a very valuable tool. I think I'll end the video here and then start the next video right from where I left off in this one. Thanks so much for watching.